So, hi guys, my name is Dima Danilov, and uh, today I'm going to talk about the uh, the building projects, C C++ projects in uh, in Docker. A few words about me: I'm a senior software engineer, currently working at GK, which is a blockchain and digital security company. Before that, I was working on blockchain projects in VMware. Before that, I was doing live and video streaming in LiveView. And in terms of technologies, I'm mostly interested in C++, Rust, Python, network programming, and distributed systems. And uh, as a hobby, sometimes I'm doing NeoVM fine tuning. So, uh, <clears throat> wait a sec. All right, so what are the common problems with uh, building C and C++ projects? I think that the major issue is that there is no standard dependency management for C or C++. And at the moment, the, uh, the only ways to provide the, the dependencies are either operating system package managers, like for example, for Ubuntu, we have uh, opt-get, and for, I don't know, for CentOS, we have uh, Eum, probably we have something for Windows, I don't know exactly what. Uh, another option is uh, to manually download and install binaries, the good old make, and then make install in the, in the system folders. Another option, which is, from my experience, getting more and more popular is adding adding uh, dependencies as Git, as Git submodules and build them within a source tree. I think it's a good approach, but from my experience, again, the issue is that if you let's say do clean, then you have build them from from scratch, which might might take a lot of time, especially if your dependencies dependencies are heavy, like Google Protobuf or Apache Thrift or things like that. Also, there are dependency manager, managers like Conan, Hunter, Build2, and I have had experience only with Conan, which is an amazing tool when everything works. But if something doesn't work or you don't have a certain uh, dependency available, let's say you, have, you need to have library version 1.2.3 and they have only 1.2.1, then you have to add your own support and you have to write code in uh, Python which is nice, but it sounds like a bit of an overhead for adding dependency, from my experience, from my, from my point of view. Uh, another issue is uh, the tool management. For example, what compiler to use? Let's say there is an engineer who comes to, to a company, installs, upget install plan, and uses the default version. Then someone updates the version to the next, installs new version of compiler. Builds everything works, but suddenly on the CI something doesn't work because the there is a slight difference between the compiler versions. I, I guess it happened to many of you. And then you try to understand what's the difference, and usually the difference is not that documented, or you need to actually know the, the drill down to the smallest and deepest di changes with, within a different mi minor version of the compiler. The same for Linka. Let's say we've used you use LD and then the project switches to, to Gold or to LD by, by LVM, you need to update your environment. So eventually it becomes a problem. Also, when you build the machine, you build the, your software on, on native machine, let's say we update some library, the minor version, and it's used in the CI, and then you build it locally. And it still builds because there is no breaking changes. But technically, you're building not the same thing that runs in the production or in the CI. Eventually, it it leads to these differences lead to the fact that that what you build and what you test locally is not the same. And then we have this works on my machine excuses, which which I personally really hate. So, uh, uh, what's the way to fix them? To fix these issues is to to use Docker. Because from my experience, from my point of view, the ideal environment is single, isolated, and reproducible. Single means that there is a single environment for both dev stations and the CI. So that if something fails in the CI, I can be sure that I can run the same problem, the same, uh, the same uh, uh, build within the same 
environment that will be not affected by my local packages or some tweaks that I did to my operating system or some some uh, not related to the project the thing that I installed and that brought some dependencies and that meant that the packages and Ubuntu, I guess, in other operating systems, there is something else. Also, I would like it to be isolated, which means that there is nothing that can be there that can affect the build and ideally the, the runtime. And the last but not least, it shall be reproducible, which means that if I add something to this environment, it shall be logged, ideally in Git, so that I can go back, check it out, build the same environment and run within it, run the compilation within this environment. And so how can we achieve it with the Docker? Uh, in, in, in the beginning, I thought I'd be not very familiar with it. So the Docker is a set of uh, products that use operating system level virtualization to deliver software and packages called containers. So the, the important thing is that the software running in a container runs on the host Linux kernel, which means that this is not a virtual machine that, that we know for, for decades, like VirtualBox or VMware. It doesn't have any, it, it, has, it, it runs on the same uh, kernel that, that any other app. Once you run an application in a container, you can easily see it by a PS or HTOP, and you'll see this process running as, as a root user. So it doesn't use more uh, resources than any other application. It is important because as you guys may know, compiler is a, is a greedy guy. It, it uses all these all the CPUs and cores and memory and, and, and everything. So we cannot put it in, in the virtual machine. So Docker achieves these things by utilizing uh, super cool kernel features such as control groups, which allow limiting application by uh, different resources, amount of resources, like a uh, number of CPU cores available for this, uh, for a container or amount of RAM, disk and other things. The other uh, kernel feature that allows doing this is namespaces. Uh, I'll just go through a few of them, like PID namespace, which means that a process running in, in its own PID namespace, it cannot see any, <clears throat> any other processes. Also ne network interfaces, it means that the process inside a container, it, it, it lives in, in, a, <clears throat> in its own network. IPC and uh, mount file systems, all these things, they, they isolate the project, the, the, the process running or processes running within the container from all the from all the angles and it's kind of hermetic. The third thing is the overlay or slash union FS. This is a uh, this is a family of file systems that allow creating uh, multiple layers, which makes possible to build a file system which is multi-layered and adding layer adding uh, binaries or, or files layer by layer which makes this uh, file system super super flexible and uh, lightweight so uh, docker for us as users contains of two basic things the first is docker image docker image is uh, is a package which contains a file system available for multiple containers. So every, so the image contains of uh, different layers. For example, we have kernel bootfs, which is not part of the uh, of the Docker image, but then we have the base image, which is usually some uh, sort of uh, operating system. Let's say Ubuntu or Alpine Linux or or I don't know whatever CentOS. And then everything that we install on top of it is another image. For example, this, at this picture, we add uh, glibc or we add curl or Apache and all these things. And eventually we build this image like, like a slight pie. The important thing to mention is that this image might be shared by multiple containers because 
that all these layers are read only for a uh, container, meaning it cannot change it. So uh, the next thing is the is a container. So container is the actual package within a process runs. It contains a free only file system coming from the image. It has a small writable runtime file system that is uh, can, that can be changed while uh, during the runtime. But all the changes done during the runtime will be demolished, removed after the process is done. After the, sorry, the the container is done. And again, it's it runs on the host kernel instance. And now, if you don't mind, I want I want to do some 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 demo. I prepared a small uh, application that we will go through, build, run, and see what's how it works. So, uh, mm -hmm. okay. Do, do, do you still see my screen? Cool. Yes. Yeah. So we have this small application that that uses uh, Boost. Um, boost file system. I added it so so we have at least one uh, heavy dependency. I call boost heavy because we have to build it and then install it. And uh, we have a very sim simple CMake file, which just adds the boost libraries, finds it, and links boost file system to the uh, to the app. I think it might be important to notice that the boost is uh, uh, linked statically. And uh, afterwards, we, I'm sorry. So uh, we can create the, uh, the Docker file. Okay, so as you may see here, we do from Ubuntu 18.04, which is the base layer. Uh, this is the image of Ubuntu. It's not exactly the same Ubuntu as as you may you guys may use in your machines. It's a very minimalistic version. Let's say it doesn't have curl or more or less things like that. It's very super minimalistic. So we need to install any everything that we need. Here we do run and install the packages that we want as sudo apt get. So we install build essentials, which, which is a package that comes with, which brings us uh, GCC, G++, make, and probably something else. CMake, because the project uses CMake and wget. Then we launch wget, download boost, build it, and that's it. Afterwards, we have uh, the actual image. So in order to run it, we do docker build. And OK, I have an image pre-built, so it didn't take too much time. But in general, it might take like a few minutes. So the, the, the initial, the, the most important commands here is docker build and the tag, which is the, the version, the, the name of the image. And then semicolon latest, which is the version. Ideally, you should use some uh, version like 0.1 or some more meaningful names. And then uh, we have this minus, I'm sorry, uh, minus f, which is the path to the Docker file. And then the dot is the actual context where the, from which the Docker would take all the, all the files. Then we can run this image. Uh, over here, I think it's. I, I'll go through the through the uh, through the parameters. So Docker run means launch a container based on the image example example build 01. Actually, I think I need to change it to latest. Uh, minus IT meaning means that we want to launch launch this uh, container as interactive, so we will be able to type something over there. Minus T means that it will have a, a pseudo TTY device for we need this device for printing colors and all these things. 
and the name of the of the container that we're launching and then the probably the most important thing is we're doing the mount we mount the current directory into the docker container so that everything that we create and build within the container will be saved on the local host so that we can easily rebuild it and use these binaries afterwards and debug them whatever the last thing is bash is the bash is the command that we launch inside the uh docker image so now we're inside docker we mounted the current source tree in the slash source so let us do make build cd build Oops. generate the make files now we can build it so now it's built let us launch it as you may see the the application runs within the i'm sorry for this uh, noise looks like cops are looking for someone <clears throat> And uh, so we have the the uh, application running, and now we can exit the uh, the Docker image, go to the build directory. We will see our dot a a dot out file. Uh, we can run it. Oh, sorry, build a o, and it runs. So we build the image. Sorry, we build the app within the container and. Uh, we can launch it within the container or we can launch it on, on our host. It is important to mention that specifically this application is compiled statically. If you guys use dynamic linking in order to, to run it on the host, the host has to have all the dependencies installed. The other option is to create a production Docker image and run the application within the Docker image, which is a very super nice way to deliver applications. So <clears throat> now when we built the, the app, you guys might say that, you know, it's, it's a bit complicated to remember all these flags and all these features of Docker. From my point of view, it's almost impossible. So I decided to, to wrap it up within something that almost every C or C++ developer knows, which is Makefile. And uh, I have created a template for, for running this kind of things. So this is the Makefile. It has, uh, it has different targets. Let's say make help. So we can build the uh, the project. We can test it. We can clean the directory. We can log in into existing uh, into exist an existing uh, image. Now this thing is super super flexible. Basically, it can be added as a sub module to to any project. And uh, the only thing that the user has to do is to override this variables like project name or compiler or the image of the image of image name or, or the uh the container name which i did over here basically this is the example which overrides the project name the uh the compiler then it includes the uh the original file and it even add, adds a target. So uh, <clears throat> let's say we want to build the, the project. We just run make. As you may see, it launches the uh, uh, something went wrong as usual. And uh, as you may see, it, it cleans the it can clean the the build directory, then build the the project. It launches. Uh, Docker and and just builds it and saves the binaries outside of the Docker. Uh, we can if if you want to fine tune or run something directly on in, in in the Docker, there is make login and we're back on track in this uh, image. 
with all the all the tools and and and, and binaries and all the jobs. So <clears throat> once the uh, once someone wants to add any dependency or or update the tools, let's say update the compiler, it can be done in 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 a way that updating Docker file, building a new image, which can be part of the CI, and then when it, when when the team checks out the new version of the master or develop whatever, they just get the new image. It's pulled automatically because uh, Docker, let's say Docker run, if it sees that the image doesn't exist on the on the machine, it just pull, pulls it from the registry. The only thing that, that the company or a team has to manage is the Docker registry, which is basically a huge storage of the Docker images, which can be cleaned, created. Now, this is how we get the single and isolated uh, build system, and uh, it can be reproducible by saving the either by saving all the image versions in the remote registry, or if we suddenly deleted this registry because it might be quite big, we can check out to the old version of the Docker file, build it, and and compile again and run again. And, uh, of course, I have all these things in the uh, in in the slides. If you guys want to go through them later, make file. So uh, uh, any like as, as you may notice, notice this project is built by the the, uh, the terminal, which I usually use. I know that many, probably many of you guys prefer IDEs and and, and some other cool text editors like like Visual Studio Code. Fortunately, both of them support working with uh, with Docker. Uh, I, I have provided links. Uh, C line requires to build a certain image. Visual Studio Code, I think it works by SSH. It, it's not that complicated to, to do it. It's kind of feasible. And uh, another good thing for, for using Docker is to run tests, which might be even more complicated if you have not the same environment that you use in DCI. Uh, for example, you have a, a relatively, from, from my experience, what I had, we have had a rel relatively uh, weak uh, CI machines, which were much weaker than and had much less uh, CPU cores than dev machines. And what was happening there due to, due to some timeouts, it was failing the CI and it didn't fail on the local machine. It was quite hard to debug it. So what you can do, you can go to the CI, you can check how many CPU cores and RAM it has and uh, tell the Docker, the local Docker, how many of CPUs and RAM they can have. So uh, basically you can have the same, uh, almost the same environment. Another good thing is about Docker is that technically you can create a Linux image on uh, on Mac. Mm, also, you can do the same on Windows. Surprisingly, Windows is much better for Docker because they have this uh, WSL layer, which is uh, simulating uh, POSIX API, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, another thing is that uh, another thing is that let's say you're running uh, you're using uh, Ubuntu and you want to build something for CentOS you can do this because it's still the same kernel you can or almost the same kernel you can create a, a doc, an image for for another Linux distro and uh, in, I think it's this feature might be even more useful for projects that are using different toolkits and uh, tool sets for for example for arm or other architectures which you guys know it might be quite complicated to install uh sometimes when you join the company it takes a week or two to install all the needed tools for compiling the project so with the docker you can you, you just get the uh, the image with all the tool set pre-installed and you just you just make it um okay i think it's 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 fine to it, it's it was enough of bragging about docker uh questions so right. we just mentioned docker compose and uh if you want to
talk more about that. It just uh, sure, sure, said sure. it's very similar. So, that's so basically, the uh, the idea of uh, as you may remember, we have used the Docker Docker run commands. Uh, the other option is to is to use Docker compose file. Unfortunately, I don't have it like. Like open, but the idea is that you can create a YAML file where you where you can uh, describe all the containers, how they might run, all the uh, mapping, all the uh, all the mounts and the environment variables, and then you just do Docker compose up and launch all the containers simultaneously. It is super super cool, guys. If you want to simulate your production environment locally. For example, you have I don't know client server, some database, and and I don't know whatever. So originally, people used to bind this all these uh, things in um, to different ports and launch it locally. Now you can actually simulate running on different machines because every every Docker container is sees itself as a separate machine, and all of them exist within within one network, which is not actually local host. It is again from from my experience is super cool for let's say distributed systems where you want to launch a cluster of of, of, of replicas or some nodes, and you you can easily have uh, the production or neck close to production environment by one click. And uh, again, in 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 my blog that I sent, I'm I'm kind of talking about it a little, but for builds, it's it's not that useful. It's more for, I think, for running tests. I think another good thing about the uh, about uh, about Docker, which is maybe not that, how do you say, it might be not that useful for us developers, but it might be cool for for us at least to understand that that the if if the application is is deployed as a Docker image, we can actually make sure that the thing we build is the same thing that is delivered. And and I think it's it's it when it was created it was kind of revolutionary, because usually what happens at, at least from my experience is that you build something, and then something lacks or you someone pre creates uh, a uh, operating system image or something like this. Now we can we, we can make sure that what we build is what is delivered by the DevOps guys. I don't know if there are any DevOps guys in this meeting, but <laughs> anywho. So yeah, being a DevOps is a superpower. <laughs> Being a developer of DevOps is uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If I may uh, just uh, add a little bit, a couple sure. of thoughts. One uh, one beautiful thing about Docker uh, uh, is that you can actually deploy it on a GitHub uh, action, and uh, so you essentially uh, uh, have your CI uh, completely uh, under control, easily uh, managed, and uh, you choose your uh, best uh, tool set, your, 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 uh, uh, to, uh, your, your compiler version and everything. And uh, it, really, it really saves life. Uh, uh, every time you run uh, it in, in a GitHub action, or well, uh, probably you can do it also on uh, uh, Bitbucket or GitLab, but uh, it's really it's it's really helpful. Yeah, it it it, it saves a ton of time, like literally tons of time. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah, it it started the the. Uh, there's uh, this uh, notion of people posting uh, what they do with Docker in their in their workplace. So feel free to add. Um, oh. I, I I I do. I usually use uh, we usually use Docker for because we I work at Embedded, so we need a tool chain and CI/CD is yeah. uh, is is really cool to. Use Docker and CI/CD and, and upload something that and a worker or whatever and uh, experiments uh, all sort of experiments when you want to install some kind of environment and test something or even start a new project. So yeah, 
it's really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone yeah. wants to speak up, also welcome. Yeah. Um, also, I think that technically, if if let's say for some reasons you you're not able to run Docker in production, sometimes it happens. But you do have your install scripts. I think that Docker build is the build is the best way to to test them because technically, when you build the image and you launch your scripts that install all the dependencies, you kind of test it. If you can build this image, compile, and then run run the your app within this this image, you will it will definitely work in a real machine like natively. So. It's another good thing about Docker. <clears throat>